Hey guys, this chart was requested by Justin Tuttle, aka Dr. Octagonopus. Um, this is Never Let Me Go. It's a 10 from the ECFA 2021 base pack. I'll leave a link to my full run in the description. Other than that, let's just get into it. Um, as far as the start of this chart, there's some easy 8th notes that I opt to double step. And there are 16th notes sprinkled in eventually, but I find that even when I double step it, there's no risk of me starting any 16th notes on the wrong foot. So I just go for it. Um, I think the last video I did, generally just, if there's 8th notes that are slow enough, I'll just opt to, to double step it. Uh, usually for me it's not worth the effort of doing the crossover, because I'll actually probably get better judgments doing it as double steps. Um, I think a majority of the difficulty of this chart for me is actually kind of in the back half. Because there's one section that really just kind of throws a lot of things at you. Build up here. Uh, when you get to this pause, it's important to know that the chorus of the song, which is the section coming up, uh, starts on a bracket. Um, so make sure the first jump that you see, you do it with one foot. Um, I guess you could memorize that it's upright, I think it's a little bit much, but just knowing that it's a bracket is going to be a big help. There are some foot switches it flows into as well. Uh, when it comes to this section right here, there are some step jumps. Um, what I want people to know is you should really stay flowy through this. Um, Step jumps should and can be a comfortable pattern to execute. Um, I think the trick here is to notice that there is a triple right here. Um, so don't feel like you have to get stuck on the jump or the tap. Keep your right foot driving through this. Uh, let's go back just a little bit. Let's go back to the, the break. Foot switch. And then the triple right coming up. Pop, pop, pop. Um, when it comes to here, um, notice that the footing for this, uh, the way that this is set up is that it's not very friendly for doing this jump as a bracket, uh, and that's actually done intentionally. Um, so when you get to this pattern, even though you were doing a bunch of brackets before, do not try to do this as a crossover bracket. Um, if it looks too uncomfortable to do as a bracket, it probably isn't. Um, and the reason is because... Uh, when you hit this jump, so your left foot is on the up arrow in this case, um, there's a foot switch section that comes after. If you hit that uh, last jump as a jump and not as a bracket, then your left foot is already in the right place for this uh, left arrow, which also sets you up in the correct position to do this next section as a foot switch. Do this jump. And then another easy foot switch there. And I think that more or less repeats. Yeah, it's the that same triple right I talked about, but it's mirrored now. Um, so, same principle here. Step jumps uh, should be and can be a comfortable pattern. So just look at this triple left, and, and this time keep your left foot uh, moving through that whole pattern. Don't feel like you have to get stuck. Triple left. Same situation here, where um, you know this could be a really awkward right foot cross under. But like I said, if it looks too uncomfortable to do as a bracket, it's probably not a bracket. So just do this as a jump. Uh, and then since your right foot is doing on the down arrow, um, then your right foot is already in the right place to play this next down arrow, um, and then. This next down arrow is played as a foot switch, so this is in your left, which I think resolves back out. So down arrow on the left here, and then this rhythm uh, resolves with a bracket on the right foot. So. Yeah, and I guess that's really important to know is that um, even though there's a lot of brackets in that section, there are those two jumps that should be done as jumps. Um, it sets you up really well for the foot switches. Um, as far as the hardest part of the chart, uh, I think it's this part. 
Right here. Side switches. There's a really deep cross over here. Four up with switch. Uh, and then some slow crossovers into 24th verse. Uh, I do do these crossovers. Because I don't want to think about how to resolve patterns. Um, I don't Is there much advice for me to give in this section? Um, uh, when it comes to this, um, I'm trying to think if this is double steppable. Oh, I misclicked to the end of the song. Let me get back to the section. I clicked around too far. Uh, I think I have played this as a double step before. Um, but you have to be really wary of this right arrow mine. So if you're going to double step it, make sure to get your right foot off. Um, otherwise, let me go back here. Um, so... Wait, what is going on here? Am I reading this pattern correctly? Yeah, uh, when it comes to this pattern, you have to actually make sure you start it crossed over. Um, so this is actually... This pattern starts on your left foot, I believe. Yep, start on your left foot. And then uh, foot switch on the left arrow to resolve. Uh, I would say the biggest piece of advice is, I've talked about this in literally every single foot switch video and every single side switch video. Uh, make sure that when you hit the last note of the first group of three, which in this case is my left foot on the left arrow, I want to make sure that I pop off the panel. So you can kind of like see when I slow it down, I kind of pop off and then make room. Yeah, look how high my left foot is. I'm really being egregious about making sure that my foot is off the panel so that my other foot can get on um, and just really be bouncy about it. Um, and then flowing through this side switch really fast. Yeah, let's look at this just a little bit slower. Bounce, yep. Uh, this next section has a really deep crossover, so just um, really think about driving the 16th note pattern through. Ooh, that was not good. Um, and really just keep it moving the whole time. So this crossover here. Uh, and then I guess it's important to know that like executing this foot switch is not hard. Um, but you need to know that it comes right after the crossovers. So don't let it... Don't let it spook you. Duck it, duck it up! Um, I would say that the reason that this ending is so hard is because the chorus, for example, has a lot of brackets, but it's this very repeated pattern, and if you figure it out in one half, the thing repeats in the second half. So you kind of have like a redemption arc, I guess, if you mess up the first half. Um, but this back half of the chart doesn't have any of that. Um, the candle side switch thing only happens once. That crossover run only happens once. Um, the foot switch thing only happens once, and it comes right after the crossover. Um, so the way that I approach the ending of this is that I don't actually go ahead and memorize, like, oh, there's a side switch, then crossover, then foot switch, then you know, 24th bursts, um, I just put myself in the mindset of be prepared for anything, and I make sure not to autopilot. Um, and that's usually enough for me. If you're still not super familiar reading these uh, tech patterns, um, it might be beneficial to memorize and remember what each piece of tech is. Uh, there, there's no wrong way to approach it as long as it works for you. And then here's some crossovers into 24th bursts. 
Um, the reason I do the crossovers here is because I don't like to think about how to resolve the pattern if I decide to do it as double steps. If you did decide to double step it, the trick is to triple step. So when it comes to here, um, I would hit these both as, I would double step this as two left foots, and then hit the upcoming 24th also with a left foot. So this turns into a triple step. Left, left, left. And kind of a similar principle for the first 24th burst, if you decide to triple step. That would be the best way to do it. Right, right, right. Left, left, left. Oh yeah, and then don't forget there's a lot of notes at the end. Cool. So that was uh that was never let me go. That song is a banger. Uh I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get content ID'd. I think this song is gonna get me a not a copyright strike, but YouTube is definitely gonna detect this song. Um Yeah, I think that's my biggest takeaway. Um just brace yourself for the ending. Don't autopilot. There's too much going on to autopilot. Especially because nothing repeats. So that's that's my biggest takeaway. Uh, thank you, Justin, for the video suggestion. Um, as far as other Friday videos are concerned, I know I haven't done an interview or long form content in a hot minute. Um, but I haven't been like super motiva motivated to organize those interviews. I set a deadline for myself for next Friday to put together a long form video. Uh, something I put together with He Ten. So I'm going to try to get that out. But otherwise, um, even if I don't put out long form content on Fridays, I'm still going to make sure to put something out every single weekday. Um, that being said, thank you uh, probably for the fourth time, Justin, for this uh, song suggestion. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Or no, I'll catch you guys next week.